Um, hey, Scott. Um, I know uh, when you guys drafted Denny at the, uh, there was obviously a lot of talk about his shot and the percentages he had in the Euro League. And he'd mentioned sort of a mechanical tweak in, in mo the months leading up to the draft. And Tommy said, when you guys got him in, you would evaluate that and go from there. So what, what have been the early returns on his shot motion? And do you think you will end up making changes to it? No, I think, it, I think his mechanics are good right now. It's just he needs reps. He's a 19-year-old kid that needs reps. Uh, he's, make, he's made shots uh, every day he's practiced. He's, it seems like he makes uh, big shots as well. I think, he is, I think his shot's good. He's just going to have to continue to – it's a uh, work, in, work in progress. But his form, the mechanics, um, I think are pretty solid. Like I said, he just needs, you know, just needs to keep doing it. He's going to have, he's going to have some good, uh, some teammates and coaches that are going to believe in it, and and you just got to keep working on it. And uh, just to follow up from yesterday, did, was there any more clarity on what you guys would do as as it pertains to the G League bubble? Yeah, I talked to Tommy. There's a good chance. Um, still working on the details, but I'm looking forward to that because we're going to have some guys that that are going to be uh, need some need some uh, some opportunities to play. Um, but that's still a little early on who and with, you know, injuries and, and COVID, we always have to have guys ready, but it definitely is moving in the right direction. I think it's, it's a pretty good chance that we will, um, I don't know all the details, but like some type of a bubble situation. Chris Miller. Hey, Scotty, how are you? Good, Chris. How you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you. Hey, the, the league is always, you know, follow the trends, right? You know, 90s basketball, 80s basketball, it's physical. Splash Brothers kind of changed the game with shooting threes. But I did notice last year kind of with the Lakers is it seems to me, and correct me yeah, if I'm wrong, size is coming back into the game. Yeah, okay. And with what Philly has done this year, they've even gotten bigger. Milwaukee's a big team. How do you – how do you see your team kind of matching up with kind of the trends of the league in terms of shooting with guys like Davis, Brad, and you know Garrison, and also having the size to compete against teams like that? I think we made it a, a nice step in the right direction um, this off season. Uh, we drafted Denny, who's big, good size, uh, good shooter. We acquired some pretty big guys, uh, Robin as big and as tough as they come at that position. Uh, obviously, uh, Russell, his athleticism and size at that position. Um, but we got, we, we did, we, I thought we did a great job of, of mixing in uh, some shooting, some toughness, some defensive uh, mindsets. But I, I, the league is definitely a lot, a lot of the good teams, you know, the final four teams they got good size and good shooting and, 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 and a lot of athleticism. I think that we're definitely moved in the right direction. What have you liked so far when it comes to the grit? Kind of the Scott Brooks team, right? Like, I, I, it's easy to see it. It's hard to describe it. But I know you're a grit and grind kind of guy, but you like also – you know, you got to have a high IQ and you also have to be, you know, athletic enough to compete with these teams. Is this team kind of taking on the identity that you want so far in camp? Yes, I think so. I, I mean, it's, it's, it's no matter what uh, era you, you come from and you play in, uh, grit and toughness uh, wins out. And you have to have, obviously, the, the IQ, the skill set, and athleticism. And I think we, we're, we're approaching having all those things right now. And, and, and you know you're really good as you have your, your two leaders leading the way and, and showing how, how the team, the inner workings of the team and the mindset of a team needs to be. And you look at, you know, you look at LeBron James, and I always admired him from a distance. He doesn't, uh, he doesn't let just the, the role players do all the dirty work. He does it. And when you have your, your best players, um, bringing their lunch pail every day to work, that, that's, when you have a, that's when you have a special group. And, and we have that with Russell and, and Brad, and it's, it was evident today. Today we really did a lot of scrimmaging, 
And it was nice to also add um, Robin in the mix today. He did uh, bits and pieces of practice, but you need all that to have success. You need that toughness. And I think um, what we have, we, we're starting to really identify what we, what we are and who we are as a team. Fred? Hey, Scott. Um, just building off what you just said about today being the first practice, I know you haven't had that much time, but it's not like they give you that much time to prepare for games anyway. Uh, what have you made of how Brad and, and Russell are, are working together? And, and not necessarily like how well they're working together, but, but like stylistically, has the, have there been any surprises? Have they done anything? And you've been like, oh, that's, that's an interesting thing to try out, things like that. No, I mean, I have a little bit of a, the knowledge on both games because I coach one for seven years, coach one going on five years now. And there's, like I said many times, I'm going to continue. There's so many similarities, um, how they approach the game and how they think the game. And I like that. Uh, they both can score in different ways. Um, Russell's going to be – he's dynamic in transition. His mid-range post-up game off the, off the board is, is as good as they, they get. Uh, it gets. And then Brad, Brad's ability to play pick and roll and shoot behind threes is as good as it gets. Uh, but I, I think there – I think that's going to be – I mean, there's obviously going to be some filling out period, but I don't, I don't see that being an issue. I don't see that being like a long extended a period. What they've done now, what they've showed myself, our coaches, and even the group, that they're going to they're gonna fit in very well together. They were – today was really – I mean, yesterday we did some five-on-five, five, but not, not as much as we did today. And, and it, was, it was pretty dynamic seeing uh, that, that white team, you know, play during the five or six minutes that we scrimmaged. And, and both of them played very, very well together. Um, and, and just to follow up, do you have anything further on Davis beyond what you already said yesterday? Yes, he can. He, I mean, he's definitely um, here in, in the building. He did some one on zero work way before any of the players came into the building. Um, he can do that. Uh, we hope that everything with all the NBA protocols have in place. He might be able to participate in group workouts. Um, uh, what's today? Thursday, Wednesday, um, Friday, Saturday, Saturday. So we can, we can, it's great. I saw him yesterday, looks great. He's very happy as he should be, right? Perfect, thanks Scott. Thank you. Dave Johnson. Hey, Scott, you just mentioned um, it was dynamic watching the, the white team in, in scrimmage. Anything in particular you could share with us that, uh, you know, well, made you, it you, you dynamic? See, yeah, you see, I mean, Russell and, and Brad are obviously special players, but just seeing the growth of TV, we talked about defensively, he needs to continue to really see it much quicker and, and react uh, right away because you're a second behind. There's so many incredible players that, that get to the cup in a, in a one or two dribbles from the three point line. But I, and then in the scene, Rui's development, I thought he is just as filled for the game as improving daily. And, and I think that was, that was good to see. And Danny, I thought he um, blended in well with, with the group and we switched some of the teams up. And I thought, I thought, I thought, Everybody had, I thought today's practice was really, really good. And I thought uh, we got better today as a team. And with uh, Bradley and, and Russell, is it a case where great players just instinctively understand the other plays? In other words, is there much of a transition of those two getting used to each other? Or, or is it a case of great players automatically kind of uh, cling together? I mean, great players, uh, I mean, they're, there's, a, there's a lot of reasons why they're great. And... And when you put them, when you put great players together, um, it usually works out. And all the all the good teams have a bunch of great players on it. Uh, we have, we want to build our team 
um, with those two guys in the backcourt and, and, and the other guys being, you know, stars in their roles. And they're, they're all important. Not one guy is more important than the other. And I think that if we establish that, I think everybody can understand their roles and, and flourish in, the, in, in their roles. I think, uh, like I said, Rui, I thought he really had a, a really good practice today. And, and two guys, I mean, they're, they're, they're unique. Their skill sets are unique, the, the backcourt that we have. And um, it's, going to be, it's going to be fun to see how it all unfolds and, and how our group continues to improve during these remaining days of training camp going into our first game in Philadelphia. Glenn. Hey, Scott. Um, what are um, some of the changes that not just you, but obviously all the coaches in the NBA are in the same boat right now? It's it's like the cliff note version of uh, getting ready for the season because it's it, it's come so quickly. You got to incorporate new players. You got to incorporate new schemes. Um, what are some of the challenges? You know, you want to focus on defense, obviously, and get that intact, but. Because it's so shortened, I mean, what are some of the challenges you face? I, I think the biggest challenge is really, I mean, it, it is short. I don't really look at it that way as, as a, the challenge because the other 29 teams are in the same um, position. So, I mean, if you make an excuse, it doesn't make sense because we're all, it's even. The only thing that, that it's challenging and every team is different, is that the, the conditioning that we never had, the, like normally you, you come in, everybody comes into town after Labor Day, and then you get to see, evaluate, and play pickup games five on five for three to four weeks. And then prior to that, they're probably playing, you know, six to, to eight weeks in the summer, wherever they are located. Uh, we haven't had that with COVID. There wasn't a lot of five on five and, and then a lot of the young players or free agents didn't have contract though they didn't want to take the risk of playing five on five so we've have we had quite a few guys in that position but somehow like like it's good to be young and it's good to be um, wise with all the the knowledge that we've given all of our players about nutrition about conditioning so they've all come into camp pretty well but the short camp, you know, we're all in the same boat. We're gonna, we're gonna just keep our priorities and and add on as the season goes on and things that we need to put in. Bubble, uh, Scott actually praised you on the way that you were kind of defending wings, and I, I'm I'm interested to know the next evolution of your game on that end of the floor is guarding multiple positions. Do you feel like you're in a good place there right now during camp? Yeah, for sure. You know. Um... Like you guys know, Y9 NBA is like three poles, like, you know, almost same. Um, you know, I play, when I'm playing kind of pole, but like, you know, you, it's almost like a three position, you know, I have to go like um, those girls and I have to sometimes go big and stuff. So, you know, for four men in NBA, I feel like, you know, you have to be able to go both, both sides. And then, yeah, I think that's why I've been doing it. And then this camp, you know, I, I walked on more, I've been walking on those like, you know, uh, wings and stuff. So, yeah, it's been great. Chase. Hey, Rui. Um, you had some pretty quick success last year making all rookie. What advice do you have to Denny of Diaz? He gets ready to go through that process as a rookie. Um, you know, for me last year, you know, um, everything was new, you know, so I really have to, you know, just, you know, just get through like every day, you know, um, either practice, game, meeting, treatment, weightlifting, anything, you know, you have to, you know, you got to take it serious, you know, um, you, everything's like metal, you know, it's always like, you know, um, but I, I missed like a lot of games, but, you know, still like I met a, all, rookie, all rookies and stuff, you know, um, I just got to be yourself and, you know, play play hard, you know, every guy come out with good energy. I think that's the key, you know, um, to get like, yeah, be rookie, yeah. And, and we haven't seen much of Evdia play, uh, you know, those of us who watch more college basketball than the Euro League. 
as, as you've gotten used to watching him the last few days, like what stands out first to you about him? You talking about Danny? Yeah. Uh, he's a good shooter, you know. Um, he's almost like, he's like, you know, um, typical like a European, like, you know, uh, big, you know, tall shooter, like, you know, almost like a DB, you know. He, he has a lot of, he has a good, you know, shooting ability, you know, you know he's a um, good defender. Um, he can move, you know, he moves like a guard. Um, like him, like he can do a lot of position, you know, he can, he can kind of be point guard. Uh, he can play foes, he can be shooter, you know, he can do a lot of things, so it's good. Ava? Hey, really. Um, Scotty Brooks has talked to us a lot about how you guys are, are probably going to be fluid at the three spot this season. Um, I'm wondering, does that require you to kind of either stay adaptable in how you play off of whoever is in that spot, you know, if it's Denny or Bonger, whoever is in there, or do you kind of have to because that spot's going to be changing, do you have to kind of stay within yourself? Like, how 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 do you think about that, I guess? I mean, at the end of the day, you know, it, it doesn't matter, you know, who who I play with, you know. Um, it's, we are like cruisers, you know. We are one team, and, you know, one, we we have the same goal, you know, to win the games every day, you know, every, every game, you know. So, but, you know, I mean, those guys are almost, I'm not saying almost the same, but they, each, you know, both, they each has like, you know, different, you know, style and stuff. But like, you know, I, I used to play with the, like a Troy, John, um, Bonga and stuff. So, you know, even right now, you know, Danny, you know, stuff, you know, you know, we, it's been like five days we've been playing, you know, he's been playing threes, high pay fours, um, those kind of stuff. But yeah, it, it, I don't think it's no, it's not gonna be a problem, you know, we just gotta be play, you know, every day. Same style. Thanks, Ray. Fred. Hey, Rui. Uh, I was just wondering, I mean, you've had some practices with Russell Westbrook now. I don't know how well you know him from both being with Jordan, but what is your guy's relationship like? And, and what have those first few practices been like with him? Um, you know, he was my one of my favorite players growing up. You know, I watched him a lot. Um, you know, and then I knew he was Jordan family and stuff, so I, I have so much respect for his game. Um, and uh, it's been, you know, a couple of days, you know, first thing I noticed, you know, he's a great reader, you know, he's a great leader. He's a, you know, he's so vocal. He, he's almost like a head coach, you know, I was like, he, he always talks to us, you know, he always talks to me. Um, you know, he's, he's a great guy, you know, I like, I like, I like to play with him, you know. He actually changed our like you know energy you know um, the team you know it's really it's been really great you know um, I'm so happy he's here and um, yeah I think it's gonna be great. And and one unrelated follow up, um, I saw the commercial. I gotta know what was it like shooting a commercial with Bruce Willis? I mean, it wasn't it was actually with him you know I, it was you know because of COVID you know I couldn't be with him but you know it was a CG but you know it was, it's great you know it's like one of the favorite. Famous like Japanese anime, you know, they're trying to kind of imitate, like, you know, do the same kind of stuff. And yeah, but you know, it's, the company is one of the, you know, the top in Japan. So it's, it's, you know, it's everywhere in Japan right now. So people talk about it. Yeah. Thanks, Rui. Yeah. Matt Paris. Hey, Rui. Um, kind of like, you know, with uh, like what you're just talking about with like everyone kind of seeing that commercial. I mean, Denny is obviously really big in Israel as well. Like you are in Japan. Just what kind of advice can you give him, or, or can you guys bond over the fact that you guys are both have like big followings in different countries? Like, what is it like to be uh, someone who is such a, a single point of a, an entire country like that? Um, it's honestly it's it's tough, but you know. Um... Either you take it or like, you know, you just, you can't take it, you know, you just gotta be yourself. Um, you know, just, you know, I just like to play basketball, you know, I love to play basketball. Um, you know, I always come out every games, you know, with a good energy, you know, I always focus on, you know, one goal, you know, to win the games. Um, I feel like it couldn't, cause a lot of stuff going on you know, outside, but you know, end of the day, you know, you, your job is to play basketball. So, just got to focus on the one thing and then, yeah, other things coming after. So, yeah, it's, it's tough, but, you know, it's, it's 
other hand, it's kind of fun too, yeah. And then um, just like, when did you film that commercial? Was it, and how long did it take? Was it just one, a one day thing or? Yeah, it's just one day. Yeah, it was just easy one. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, man. All right, last question, and we'll move to the Japanese portion. Glenn? All right, thank you. You there, Glenn? <laughs> Sorry, guys. Sorry. There he is. Um, hey, Rui, talk a little bit about some of the things since the bubble ended that you really wanted to refine in your skill set. Uh, what like what, what did I walk on? Yeah. Oh yeah, I I walked on a lot of trees and uh, bow hands and stuff. And uh, I think mostly my body and stuff like you know get stronger. I'm now I weigh like a 240. I remember last year around this time it was 230, so you know almost 10 pounds. You know, again 10 pounds. It's 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 pretty good, you know. And I still feel like I'm I'm moving good, so it's good. And I feel stronger. And the trees is the one that I walked on a lot, so. Yeah, I mean, you know, even like this training camp, you know, I shoot, I think, you know, I've been shooting all bad, so. Yeah. You have been a professional for a couple of years now. I'm interested, like when you came over here to the States, how much did that actually help you uh, communicate with teammates that are older than you? It helped me a lot because I came at age of 16 to, um, to play professionally and I experienced uh, how to how how is it to play it with adult in Maccabi? Uh, you know everybody's is older than you, and they got different things to talk about. And it wasn't easy in the beginning. They went at me, and it made me tougher throughout the years. And I I managed to face it and be better and really be a part of the team after three years. So after I I faced that challenge, uh, I think it's very hard to challenge me again. I think I'm more ready. I'm more mature, and overall I know how to handle things better. Just a follow up to that. How do you not get starstruck being around a guy like Russell, who, you know, is someone that I'm sure you're picking his brain daily? How, like, can you repeat that question? I don't yeah, so starstruck over here. It's like if you see somebody that you watched on TV and you're like, oh my God, I love to hang out with that person or whatever. Now this is your teammate. So how do you not get kind of overwhelmed by Russell Westbrook's aura? Listen, I won't, I'll be honest. At the beginning, it was, it was cool. But it eventually, we all play basketball. We're all humans, you know? Everybody makes mistakes. Everybody talking, to every, like, regular stuff. And then at the end of the day, he's, he's, we, we're, we're people. So it doesn't, it doesn't make any difference between us. The only difference is experience and, and what, he, what he's been through. Um, but definitely, the beginning was cool. And then me and Russ got really good together. I mean, we have a great relationship. Uh, he's talking to me a lot, and I'm all, all listening to him because he's been through a lot. So me and Russ are cool together, and hopefully we can go, do great things uh, this year. Thanks, Danny. Appreciate it. Thank you. Chase? Hey, Danny. Um, we just asked Rui Hachimura about you, and he compared your shooting to Davis Bertans, which is uh, very high praise. I I'm wondering what your reaction is to that. Rui, thank you so much, man. I appreciate it. I'm trying to get my shots up every day. Um, I worked a lot on my shooting. I think it's coming together. I have still a lot to work on, uh, but definitely getting my reps up. And you know, if he compares me to to uh, to Bertans, I don't want to want to. I don't want to change it. So uh, I don't want to say anything else. So leave it at that. And uh, also speaking to Rui, you know, he was he was all rookie last year. He had some instant success in the NBA. What have you noticed about him and his approach that maybe you could learn from? I asked Rui about his rookie year, definitely. He said it wasn't easy. I mean, being a rookie is not easy. Uh, he talked to me about the, the, the rookie duties I need to do and, and how I'm going to face this. And he just told me to play. I mean, I have the skill. I, I got drafted here for a reason. I'm a big competitor. I like to win. So I'm, I'm just going to play 100%. And, and I'm, I'm not going to – I don't believe I'm going to have a problem. So. Fred. Hey, Danny, what's going on, man? How are you doing? Uh, 
we uh we haven't really spoken to you since you've really had a chance to like go through real official practices with the team i'm I'm wondering you I mean these are your first i know you've been through intense high level practices before, but these are your first ones with you know an n b a team what has that been like for you? Have you had any moments where you've been like oh this is this isn't what I realized it's different i'm not i'm not gonna lie it it, it is different. And in the beginning, you know, also when I was in Maccabi, I was a little bit more, more, my game was, was accelerating more. I was playing more fast. I was not calm as I am, as I used to be. And it's all because it's new to me. When, when things are new to me and I feel like, you know, first days, I'm not like where a lot of, a lot of um, players on the team right now. And it all seems so fast for me. But I believe when 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 we're gonna start the season, we have these games, and as more games I'm gonna play, I'm gonna feel the game come slower to me, and that's that's eventually what I'm targeting and I'm aiming for. Um, yeah, that's that's about it. What what do you do? Cause cause when when I ask that question to rookies, that's like speed of the game. That's the most common answer of the thing they have to adjust. I'm sure you had a similar thing when you started playing at higher levels in Israel, right? How, how did you overcome that when, when you were younger? Or am I wrong? And that's never really been a thing for you. It's been a thing for me in the beginning. It happens for, for, for because it's new to you and, and, and you're trying to do everything fast, you know, because you're so, like, so excited. But it's just all slowed down for me. And I saw it in my third third year in Europe I, I felt like all it's all slowing down for me I'm not playing as fast I'm thinking more um, I'm reading the game better so it's gonna happen here too I mean I just need to get used to everything I just need to break through um, and hopefully it will be like that here and I'll, I think I'll play better so we'll see how it goes well thank you Danny thank you Ava Hey, Danny, um, can you expand on those rookie duties Rui was telling you that you had to do? Did you have to do anything like that uh, when you were younger and, and playing overseas? We didn't have rookie duties overseas, but guys were definitely pranking me. Uh, tying the shoes together, taping my locker up. So I got hit with some, um, <laughs> I got hit with some things, but um, not not something like rookie duties, like backpack and bringing food and stuff. But I mean, those are my teammates. They're gonna play with me. I need to do it. I'll do it out of love. You know, those are my teammates. If I can, if I can give something to them, it's out of love. It's not I'm gonna do it with love. So, yeah. I hope every time you give them food, you say, "Here's your meal with love." I I hope that's something you have to do. Um, Scott Brooks. If it, if it makes us play better, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, Scott Brooks was saying he hasn't really had to take you aside all that much in practice and, and kind of give you instructions or anything like that. But through, I imagine you guys have had conversations just through the first couple, uh, couple things. What have kind of been his message so far to you? Um, it was in general questions like, you know, we talked about where I came from and, and like my history was and, um, he, he he does test me. He, he puts me up challenges in practice, and, and I actually like it. It's good for me. Uh, um, and you know, I'm not I'm not all the time facing those challenges. Like what do you like? Not all the time. Um, how can I say it? Make it like let's say he gives me the shoot free throw. If not, if I miss the whole team runs and I missed it one time, I'm not all the time perfect. But I like those challenges because it makes me better. So. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Glenn. Jenny, Marshlampa. Makoy. My name. Kodesedo. All right, that's all I know. Um, hey, Denny, I, I, I recently saw a, um, a YouTube video of you talking to one of the former great players that I played against a hundred years ago in Israel, even before your dad got there, uh, Jerome Jumshi. And, you know, talk a little bit about, you know, Jerome, Jerome Jumshi? Of course. 
Um, he was a great player. I played against him when he was like 18 years old and he, he was like the youngest guy in, um, in, uh, in the premier league at the time. He was a great player. Your history of guys like that and Mickey Berkovich and Alcee Perry and all those guys that played for Maccabi, how much has your dad talked to you about those guys? And, you know, with that YouTube video, did you have a chance to, you know, pick the brains of some of those guys that have been around a long time? in Israel? Daron probably was the closest to me because he actually was, he was around the court a lot. Um, of course, we sat down and talked about things and he advised me some things, but no, my dad actually didn't really talk um, about him. I mean, history-wise, he knows everything about him. Like, they know each other, but it wasn't a point that I just talked with him about him, no. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's it. What about some of the other guys that played for Maccabi Tel Aviv in the year, like Monio Oresti and all those guys? Have they, have they come back and you know and work with you or talk to you about the history of Maccabi? No. Sir. no? All right. That's what I said. Thank you. Thanks, man. We got time for just a few more. Matt Paris. Hey, Denny. Um, You've had experience like playing for your country, like representing um, your people, the, the fame that comes with that for a few years now, obviously. Just how do you expect that to be different in the NBA? And what do you kind of have to, how has your past experience helped you um, kind of come with representing Israel just uh, and all those fans? Oh, I didn't understand. What was the question? Just... Um, yeah, just. How do you expect your experience in the NBA to be different in terms of interacting with Israeli fans or, um, and what has your past experience helped you with uh, that sort of interaction and representing them? Um, first of all, Maccabi was a very um, high pressure team with a lot of fans. So I got known a lot back there in Israel. So I have some um, experience with fans and how it goes. I, I love, I love when, when all Israel is behind me um, now also Jew, uh, Jew, the Jewish community around the world, also in the United States, are with me. And, and the, I mean, that's the biggest blessing you can have, um, to have that, that amount of fans um, that, that supports you. And at the end of the day, that pushes you and it gives you motivation to play good and to work hard, to represent as best as you, as best as you can. So for me, it's just a blessing. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, may I ask a question in Hebrew? Hello? Yeah, yes, I go can. ahead. Yeah, can. Hi. Hi, Danny. Uh, Gil Tamari. This is Gil Tamari from News 13 Israel. And I'll ask you, please, uh, in Hebrew, tell us what's going on in the last few days. I don't know. I'm not sure. Because I'm going to go to the new world, which you don't know anyone here. You need to get out of your house, you need to get out of your house. סליחה, אתה צריך למצוא לעצמך בית, אתה צריך למצוא לעצמך מכונית, אתה צריך להתארגן על הכל. זה לא קל, תוך כדי להתאמן גם, להכיר את כל החבר'ה החדשים. יש המון חבר'ה סביב הקבוצה שבאמת עוזרים לנו, שאתה יודע, אתה צריך להכיר ואתה עוד לא במאה אחוז מכיר את כולם. אבל סך הכל אתה חי את החלום, אתה יודע. עבדתי כל כך קשה בשביל זה, ו- ולהיות במקום הזה שמאמינים בי ונותנים לי, ו- ו- וכל הזמן דואגים לי שאני אהיה בריא, ואני אהיה והכל בסדר איתי, וזה פשוט כיף לשחק <coughs> פה כדורסל. אז איך נראה החול- החלום ביום-יום? זה כבר שבועיים. איך זה נראה? איך זה מרגיש? תתאר לנו. Um, אני באולם מתשע בבוקר עד שלוש בצהריים. זה לא קל. Um, אבל זה העבודה שלי. ואני מרוויח על זה כסף, ו- וזה, וזה, וזה גורם לי לטייל בעולם, וזה באמת נותן לך את המוטיבציה לעבוד כל כך הרבה שעות בעולם, ובסופו של דבר אני רק רוצה שיהיה לי שנה ראשונה טובה וכל הזמן להתקדם, כל הקריירה. אז מבחינתי זה לא חשוב כמה זמן אני נמצא בעולם. יש לך כבר חברים מהקבוצה שאתה יכול להצביע עליהם? האמת שאני בסדר עם כולם, אני, אני נורא חברותי גם באופי שלי. האמת שאני ממש בסדר עם כולם. אני מדבר קצת יותר עם הרוקיז, כי הם עוברים את מה שאני עובר, אבל חוץ מזה כולם בסדר גמור איתי. יש משהו שאתה חושש ממנו? אני את הפחדים שלי כבר עזבתי מזמן, אתה יודע. 
היה לי, עברתי כל, כל כך הרבה דברים עד, עד, עד לפה, ואני אעבור כל כך הרבה דברים שאני פשוט, אני, אני פשוט יודע שאני בן אדם חזק, ואני מאמין בעצמי. אתה מתאר? אתה מתאר שאתה במגרש מ-9 בבוקר עד הערב. ראית כבר את וושינגטון? חווית? בילית קצת? עשית משהו בעיר? קורונה, קורונה זה, זה לא... זה פאק טוב, ואין מה לעשות, אין... תודה רבה. 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 The amount of experience and knowledge he gave me, it's, it's off the roof. Like, I mean, he's, he was a professional. He came first to the gym. We were always talking about things. I was always asking about the NBA, and he always answered me. No matter what the time, no matter how tired he was or angry he was, he always said to me um, and answered my questions, and we became very good friends. And it's cool that now I, I left Maccabi, and we, we, kinda, we, we can um, – meet but not meet as a player and to play as a, as a coach to player so it's, it'll be a little bit weird but i mean amar is amar and i'll always love to see him you know thank you all right last question neil hey jenny uh you know obviously i'm sure it's been a very whirlwind couple mo- weeks and months for you um since you got here to dc is there one area that you think you know you've been able to improve well in, whether it's a specific facet of the game, a specific drill, or anything like that? Um, something that I got better off in. Um, I mean, I'm just working to, to be better every day, but um, if you ask me, I think mentally, to be a little bit off my friends, a little bit off my family, and, and to face challenges in a new environment. Fair enough. Thanks, Danny. All right, Danny, I appreciate your time. You guys, stay safe.